Okay, so today I'm going to talk about, about the hope renov theorem, which is a result that relates the topology of a manifold to its geometry. All right, so to start off, let us fix a Riemannian manifold. And uh, recall that there's a so-called Riemannian distance that you can define between two points, x and y, which is the infimum of the lengths of all piecewise smooth curves between joining x and y. Now, as we saw already, uh, such a d it gives you a metric space structure on your manifold. And we say that this uh, manifold M is complete with the Riemannian structure if every D Cauchy sequence is convergent. So the notion that you learned in basic metric topology. On the other hand, we say that M is geodesically complete if for every P, the exponential map x p v is defined for every tangent vector emanating from p. So seemingly we're dealing with two completely different notions of completeness here, but the purpose of the Hopfrenov theorem is to say that m is metrically complete if and only if it is geodesically complete. So quite a surprising result the first time you see it. So if geodesics extend forever, then your manifold has to be metrically complete, all Cauchy sequences are convergent, and vice versa. All right, so let me give you the proof of this uh, result. So let's start with the relatively easy direction. So the relatively easy direction is when m is uh, geodesically, so m is assumed not to be geodesically complete. And let's assume that it is metrically complete. So, if it's not geodesically complete, then one can find a unit speed geodesic uh, parameterized between zero and S that is cannot be extended at S, sorry. All right, so now what you take is you take some parameters SJ that increase to S. So then what you get is the distance between the gamma sj's and the gamma sk's always has to be less than the absolute value between sj and sk. Why? Well, simply because of the fact that gamma was chosen to be unit speed. Now, what this inequality implies is that the sequence gamma sj has to be a Cauchy sequence. And since m is assumed to be complete, metrically complete, then it has to have a limit p in m. Okay, so around this point P and M, let's take a normal neighborhood where the exponential map is a diffeomorphism, so a normal neighborhood with radius delta. So as it's uh, trying to illustrate it here. Uh, so in this normal neighborhood, right, we have a very simple uh, description of uh, geodesic segments using the exponential map. So that's what I'm going to use in a minute. And then let's reparameterize our geodesic gamma in this fashion. Let's call gamma uh, tilde t to, to be gamma s minus t. So let's reverse the geodesic. So what we see here, right, is that when uh, t approaches zero, then the new geodesic gamma tilde t actually approaches p, right? So like, like it's, it's, it's uh, illustrated in this picture, right? So gamma tilde approaches p as the parameter goes to zero. Well, but uh, then this must mean that gamma tilde is of this very specific form, right? So every geodesic emanating from p is, uh, is of this form in a normal neighborhood. It's equal to exp tv for some uh, tangent vector v with uh, uh, unit speed. But now we look at this expression. This expression obviously extends also for negative values all the way down to negative delta, right? Because we are in a normal neighborhood. So that means here in the picture, right? I can extend my geodesic all the way up to here. And this gives a contradiction because this means that also the original geodesic gamma extends. So we're finished with the direction uh, with the relatively easy direction uh, 
let's look at the other direction where when we assume that m is geodesically complete okay so for that i will need a very important lemma that i will prove at the end of this uh, short lecture so the lemma says that if you're at the point p where the exponential map is defined for all points of of the tangent space then every point q for every point q there exists a geodesic gamma between p and q realizing the distance between the two points so this is quite an important fact in general between every two points of a Riemann and manifold there might not exist a distance uh, minimizing geodesic but if the exponential map is defined at a point for every tangent vector then between that point and all other points there always exists a geodesic minimizing uh, length okay so let's assume this lemma i'll prove at the very end and let's show that geodesically complete manifolds are actually uh, topologically complete okay so let's take a cauchy sequence and let's try to show that actually this Cauchy sequence is is convergent. So let's uh, so by the lemma, all these points QJ can be joined uh, to the point P by a uh, geodesic. Now, but this geodesic I can always take in this form, right? X T V J for some. Uh, tangent vector vj right and again the point is that at time t equals one i want that this geodesic exactly crosses through uh, the point qj so i'm just joining the point p to the points qj with uh, geodesics and i'm writing them in this exponential form now the distance between uh, p and qj is is the length of these geodesics gamma j and given how I parameterize these geodesics, so the parameterized between the by the unit interval, the length of these geodesics will be exactly the length of the tangent vectors vj. Right? Now, since qj is a Cauchy sequence, then these numbers here that I'm underlining have to be bounded. So they're bounded up by a constant c. So in particular, these vectors vj in TPM are also bounded. But TPM is really just a copy of Euclidean space. In Euclidean space, if you have a bounded sequence, then that means that after taking perhaps a subsequence, uh, the sequence converges to some element V in TPM. Okay, but then it's quite simple, right? Because the exponential map is continuous. So XP of VJ has to converge to xp of v. Now the xp of vj, these were just the qj. Right? Now, so because uh, the Euclidean topology on a manifold is the same as the Riemannian topology, we get that the qj converged to this point xpv in the Riemannian distance, so m is complete. Okay, so all that is left to do is to uh, prove this uh, technical lemma. So let's go back to the statement. So again, what we know is that the exponential map is defined uh, at the point P for every tangent vector at P. And we have to show that there exists a geodesic connecting P to any other point of the manifold, realizing the distance between P and Q. Okay, so let's give a proof of this lemma. Okay, so let's uh, take R to be the distance between P and Q, and let uh, B delta P be a normal ball with boundary S delta P, right? So again, normal ball means that this on, on this uh, ball, the exponential map is uh, a diffeomorphism, and the boundary is, is the normal sphere S delta P. So these are the points at a distance delta away from the point P. Okay, so since this uh, uh, normal sphere is a compact set, 
right? This means that the distance between this compact set and the point Q has to be minimized at a certain point. And let's take that point, for example, to be x0. It might not be unique, but that's okay. Now, x0, since we're in a normal ball, is equal to x p delta v for some unit length tangent vector at p. All right? So, uh, what we will do now is, is, is uh, what I'm trying to illustrate here in the picture, right? So, this is p here this is q and then x0 is somewhere here on the boundary of this uh, delta sphere and x0 minimizes the distance between the delta sphere and the point q so what is to be expected is that the geodesic between p and x0 should extend to a geodesic between p and q now but of course we have to prove this so this is what we need to show, right? Is that Q is equal to X P R times V, where X, where, where this curve that I will denote by gamma, right? So gamma S equals X P S V is this geodesic that I try to illustrate here with the arrows. Right, so what we're trying to, we have this geodesic gamma and then we're hoping that it's, it's, it's sort of aiming at the point Q. Uh, okay, so the way we show this is by taking this set A. So this A is the set of points between 0 and R, points S between 0 and R, such that the distance between gamma S and Q is equal to R minus S. Now, uh, what's easy to see, of course, is that uh, 0 is contained in A, so A is not empty, and also A is a closed set. It's not difficult to see, because distance, everything here in this condition is continuous. So the claim that will uh, finish the proof is that if S0 is a point in A, then also S0 plus delta is going to be A in A for some small delta. So what this obviously implies is that the supremum of A is equal to R, right? Because A is uh, closed. But this means that distance from gamma R to Q is actually equal to zero, right? Because R is equal, is in A. But this means that gamma r is equal to q, right? What I noted here. So we would be done. So really, if we can argue this claim, then we proved the Hopf-Renov theorem completely. Okay, so let's finish proving this claim. So for that, I am taking a point S0 in A. And again, as before, I'm taking a normal ball around gamma S0 for some small radius delta prime. This could be very, very small, right? So to, to, to update the picture from the previous page, right? So now we have this extra information here with the point gamma S0, and I'm taking this red normal ball here with radius delta prime, and I'm doing this similar thing as before, right? So I'm taking a point X0 prime on the normal sphere, minimizing the distance between the normal sphere and the point Q. Right, so this red normal sphere and the point Q. So as before, a minimizer exists. Now, because of the fact that every uh, piecewise smooth curve between gamma S0 and Q has to pass through this uh, normal sphere, we have this identity, that the distance between gamma S0 and Q has to equal the radius of the normal ball, that's uh, delta prime, plus the distance between x0 prime and q, which minimizes, again, the distance between the normal sphere and q. Also, s0 is in A, so that implies, by definition of A, that the distance between gamma s0 and q is actually equal to r minus s0. All right, so now if we uh, subtract 
uh, these two identities, we get the distance between x0 prime and q is actually equal to r minus s0 minus delta prime. All right, so next we apply the triangle inequality here for this, uh, the distance between p and x0 prime up here. And then we get that this is, this distance dominates, the distance between p minus the distance uh, between q and x0 prime. Now both of these I know what they are, right? So dpq the distance is r, and then the distance between q and x prime, I just computed it here. So that's here, you subtract and you get that the distance between p and x0 prime dominates s0 plus delta prime. Now, however, note if, if you go along this curve that I'm illustrating with these arrows, so if you go along from p to gamma s0 prime, the distance here from p and gamma s0 prime until here is s0, and from here to x0 prime, the distance is delta prime. So the distance between p and x0 prime has to be less than s0 plus x0 prime. Oh, but in the previous line, I got the exact opposite. So that means the distance between p and x0 prime actually is equal to s0 plus x0 prime. Oh, but that means that this broken geodesic that I just uh, drawn up here with the arrows is length minimizing. Is length minimizing. But every length minimizing curve, as we proved, is a geodesic. So that means that actually this broken geodesic between p and x0 prime has to be a smooth geodesic, right? And, it, and since it starts off as the geodesic between p and gamma s0, it has to also continue as the geodesic between gamma and s0. So that means this point x0 prime here is actually down here meaning x0 prime has to be equal to gamma s0 plus delta. Oh, but then we are done, because if you put instead of x0 prime, gamma s0 plus delta in here, then you get exactly that s0 plus delta is in A, giving you the proof of the Hopf-Renoff theorem. All right, thank you for your attention. If you liked it, please go ahead and subscribe and like the video.